today's talk uh, is about the alien manipulation of DNA and how the truth can be distorted through language and um, what I'm trying to do is uh, in this video is get to the the bottom of um, uh, what these stories are in biblical text from a logic point of view not from a scholarly point of view from the view of uh, the human condition uh, the human condition doesn't change you know we need food we need water we need shelter uh, we need to feel loved and we need to be loved we need to feel compassion and we need to show compassion uh, these are uh, undeniable truths except for the psychopathic so here we go so really the topic is a is a very strange one and uh, what I want to do is have a look at some of the old text and uh, try and get to the bottom or, or at least in a logical uh, non-academic non way uh, looking at um, what what we've been told what is it we, you know uh, it's been so misunderstood that uh, we end up now with um, alien manipulation of our DNA uh, from one category and then we have um, other categories of religious bigots uh, people who don't live their lives by the opening statement I made and so uh, the Lord said this is the Old Testament this is uh, in Genesis my breath shall not abide in man forever so um, again you know this God or, or whatever this Lord is uh, is a force in man and uh, during his days of 120 years so there are records that suggest that we live longer um, in ancient times in the golden ages uh, that the Vedic scriptures talk about and I believe that's just because of a higher electromagnetic field which allows cells to divide quicker uh, for us to, to live in in the age of repair of health you know of a, uh, of a stronger magnetic field quite simply but it was then and later too that the Nephilim appeared on the earth when the divine beings cohabited with the daughters of men who bore them offspring so uh, who were the Nephilim well they were the giants and they're referenced as giants and the Lord who was this Lord um, you know it's it's lost in the distance of our of the interpretation of the language um, we don't under, we can't truly say that we could understand that we could come to some very strange conclusions about it so this is a, another version of it and also afterwards when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and then they were born children so this is a, a real so let's have a look at the language the sons of God came into the daughters of men and uh, I'm speaking to my wife about it because uh, I have my own take on on what this what these gods are and uh, uh, it comes from a well I well I believe that we we've got a total misunderstanding of the word and the word has been mistranslated and our understanding of what God means today is nothing um, in relation to what the ancients saw the word God in and I'll give an example shortly but the, the sons of God came into the daughters of men you know it's even strange language came into the daughters of men 
what you, you know are these gods possessing forces uh, what are these gods you know it's hard to say so I want to give an example of um, why we're so lost and uh, this isn't meant to be offensive uh, people may be offended by it uh, but it isn't it's an it to show an illustration of um, how language even even in a very short time can be uh, misunderstood and um, uh, and uh, may cause offense as well you know you know so a fag in the UK is a cigarette so if I was to say um, I'm going out for a fag I would be uh, recent laws uh, suggest that uh, we have to uh, vacate any premises that have, sh that have uh, public places uh, because of the passive smoking thing so I'm going out for a fag I'm going out for a cigarette so you replace the word fag for a cigarette I'm going out for a fag I'm going out for a cigarette now that's a translation um, just by changing the one word but in North America um, the meaning of uh, fag uh, or faggot uh, is abbreviated to fag uh, as a person of um, a certain certain sexual orientation so, uh, if in North America you were t to say that, you would be going out for, uh, now the word totally replaced, and, and if that word was retranslated, you know, into what it was, I'm going out for a homosexual. Now, even though you may be standing in your backyard or your back garden, now, unless that's understood in context that you're going out for a cigarette you know and that language is left we could have the same situation of a god and god you know these things have different meanings and if you imagine the scenario now of obama because he's a, an occasional smoker he's, he's quoted on record talking to one of our politicians or oh, let's go out for a fag and that uh, over history people stopped smoking and didn't even the records of anybody smoking were lost he would be suggesting that he's going out for a, for a whatever in the North American translation of the word <coughs> so we really need to get back to the understanding of what on earth are these gods and of course the Sumerians the Hopi all our ancient um, cultures uh, if you study deep into these things um, you will find multiple gods and uh, these multiple gods are more like uh, scientific observations and then what we would understand as God today so there's a God of lightning and a God of magnetism and there's a God of, of um. so we go back to that translation and afterwards the sons of God so we have to understand what these sons of God came into the daughters of men one of the principal gods was the sun itself you know so we're talking about heavenly bodies but uh, that were the gods so I think we need to have a look at the Dead Sea Scrolls first um, uh, the Genesis text I think the oldest carbon date in for that is uh, in 89 BC or before common era um they were written in so what we 
what we've got to do now is have a look at the cultures of where this where these texts have come from. So they were written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Uh, they were also there's also talks of Sanskrit, although none of that comes through. So there's a couple of cultures there that that uh, to e that are touching each other. Um, for them to be translated into Greek, whether whether Greek was the originating language or Aramaic or Hebrew, who's to say? And obviously, it would uh, offend a number of people for me to suggest that they were originally Greek texts translated into Hebrew. Uh, that's I don't know because I haven't got and haven't been able to do all the evidence and myself. But you know, there's some strange stuff going on. The history's written by the winners and. So the Dead Scrolls. Scrolls. Uh, what was interesting in the uh, caves in Kuram, Kur I think it is, uh, where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found, bronze coins were found. So to make bronze is a, a technical process. And uh, these coins had uh, were from the 135 BC. So they're older than some of the texts for the uh, for the Genesis uh, chapters, and uh, they have Greek names on them. So uh, what I would suggest is that uh, tr desert tribes um, didn't really have the infrastructure to be manufacturing coins. Uh, they were too too busy. Um, whether they nomad, their mom, nomadic life would mean that they're more likely to trade in livestock than coinage. <coughs> so we have a merging of um, Hikarinius, uh, the merging of cultures of Greek, and uh, so we can assume that some of this text has been merged together with other more ancient text. Um, you know, Greek coins or um, uh, this coin was um, named uh, John from from uh, what is John from the location near the Caspian Sea but the Greeks called it Hycarania um, so these are the coins that were in the cave they they have the place name of a of a Greek name and not the Caspian Sea. So something has merged, and uh, because the Greeks had the infrastructure to be manufacturing these coins, um, I'd suggest that it was minted by the Greeks. Although that went all that. You know, uh, I mean, that's uh, it certainly influenced the place name is a Greek place name, so and that's not in dispute. So, the Library of Alexandra, Alexandria, uh, 323 BC, so that's 200 years or 230 years before the earliest fragment of the Genesis. Uh, uh, the records suggest that Julius Caesar in 48 BC, which was, a, you know, around about the time that the the early Genesis frag carbon date the fragment was found in the cave, and accidentally burned it down. So there was a there was an infrastructure that would date back uh, two three hundred years uh, prior to the earliest Genesis Genesis, uh, and this was a library. Um, so, uh, some of this text could be coming from the Library of Alexandria. And I'm sorry to labour all this stuff, but... Uh, so I want to talk about, uh, you know, how we how we misunderstand things. Uh, Socrates wrote about Lodestone. And uh, the observations that he wrote about Lodestone, which is the magnetic stone, is it imparts the power to other metallic objects which is what we see with magnetism. So he's observing something. Um, there was a, a god of 
magnetism and and electromagnetism but he's not suggesting uh, he's suggesting that um, he's observing um, the effects of magnetism and uh, there's even a, a, a reputed article that Archimedes is said to have had such a powerful magnetic lodestone that it could pull nails out of enemy ships so was that possible you know in the higher magnetic field things happen I mean Tesla coils cause effects um, Hutchinson has been using those Tesla coils to cause effects <coughs> so we can observe unusual electromagnetic effects in, in higher electromagnetic fields is that possible I can I can say why I'm bringing this is that these are um, understandings of their surroundings and universe you know we can dismiss them all where they worship the god of electricity or the sun god I mean Thales from um, 624 BC is believed to be the first person to study a uh, electricity so you know we can say oh well they're heathens they believed in multiple gods maybe just maybe the gods that, uh, that they were looking at were more should be renamed as um, forces or unknown forces um because they weren't understand and to be honest even today these unknown forces we can call them the god particle if you want to uh, still are a mystery to us and maybe in these gods they were just describing the mysteries anyway so we go back to the Book of Enoch, and uh, obviously the Jewish religion is a monotheistic uh, religion. Um, didn't believe in the multiple gods, and yet uh, the Book of Enoch descri describes the fall of the Watch as the angels who fathered the Nephilim. And in this book, the Nephilim are described as giants. Um, Uh, <coughs> um, they were the offspring of the sons of gods and daughters of men but they were the Nephilim were, were beings that uh, or things or whatever that the word Nephilim is, is to fall <coughs> so we're not you know this can't be easily understood so um, we go back to the merging of these cultures and ideas and whatever and so the Ogus the giant um, the book of giants is a Jewish book expanding on the narrative in the Hebrew Bible discovered in the, in the caves in the dead, by the Dead Sea Scrolls uh, this is the second century, so obviously it must have been carbon dated to the second century. The Book of Giants doesn't feature. So, giants. Mm. Now I wonder, and uh, this was the logic behind it, I wonder whether giants featured in, in any of these uh, Greek texts. And um, these giants mated with the daughters of Eve and and of course um you know there's a great dragon uh the the great dragon and um uh in these texts and also they in in this in these august the giant text they talk about gilgamesh well gilgamesh was uh, a sumerian text so we're introducing sumerian creation poems 
Humbaba or Humbaba um, is mentioned in the Eluna Elish, Eluna Elish, which is 792 BC. The pottery in cuneiform has been date, uh, dated. So these, so these things that are filtered into the Jewish religion <coughs> are predated by earlier text. Fact. You know, Gilgamesh and the Inuna Elish. I mean, this is probably why the Sumerian, uh, the the museums have been destroyed because they want to get rid of the evidence. Whoever the, whoever they are, I don't know. Uh, but the evidence suggests that Gilgamesh uh, is a Sumerian creation story. And this is filtering into the Book of Giants, a Jewish book. Coming up, with, all this stuff seems to be coming up the same stable, but just being misinterpreted. So what we have is a list of Greek deities: um, the goddess of love, the goddess of music, the go goddess of agriculture. And so we have to say, well, you know, the goddess of ether. The primordial deities. Now, this is obvious in older culture, um, or appears in older culture. There's the Titans, which I'll reference later. Uh, because the sun was one of the Titans. And um, giants. So, now, when the Jewish. Uh, in the Jewish. Um, book they have giants and they have giants in the Greek uh, the Greek uh, culture in fact they they have uh, the king of the giants he was struck down by lightning after he attempted to rape Hera so they have a so they have like the Nephilim a giant who comes into the daughters of Eve and you have a giant who tries to rape Hera. I mean, these stories are, you know, so similar that you just go, oh, well, they've come up the same stable, they've been manipulated by one society and the other, and they're telling us the same thing. But the Greeks were studying this at an intellectual level, these forces. And so what we've got is something we don't understand. So, there are sea de deities and uh, various other ones. So it just gives you a, an indication of um, how much, and I'm scrolling through these just to show you how many there were. You know, sky de de deities. You know, these, so they have these, um, the giants, and um, they even, uh, have uh, uh, a sort of god or demigod um, of um, alcohol and uh, so a lot of these now have um, have filtered into what we believe to be monotheistic religions and so they so you know, the Greek coins and the whole things that are filtering in and are, um, uh, are filtering in. We have the giants from the Jewish book of um, August the Giant. Or they even, uh, as I said before, they have a god of unmixed wine and incontinence. So are they referencing now um, that certain aspects so do we think that there is a god the the of the unmixed wine and incontinence or are they making an observation that uh some force some process which is which is in unmixed wine causes in incontinence 
I mean, anyone who's been pissed knows the, mean, the meaning of the word pissed. You know, some people, when they're drunk, will will uh, wet themselves. But do we believe that the Greeks, having an understanding of magnetism, believed that there was a god that made them we themselves? I'm pretty sure that we, we're we just uh, underestimating the, the actual nature of these people. And so what I've done is just streamed um, a number of these, uh, just these Greek deities. But of course, uh, you, you know, they're these giants. So what, so what we're looking at is the understanding of gods, is we don't understand. And this runs through the Vedas. This runs through the Hopi's understanding of, of gods, and they call them pagans, but they were more more describing forces. So this is more like a science page. This is a science book. It's not God. And in fact, I think that that uh, they would laugh uh, if we could ever communicate. Um, you know, or, or get to understand what they're really saying, is we could ever communicate with them, with them on the idea of what is God, a fag and a fag. You know, that's what we're looking at, and we're looking at no understanding of it at all. And so we have to say, well, we get to the stage of. Um, Of one of the gods, and that is the sun. So the sun um, was called one of the titans. In fact, Homer, again, one of those people that were were written about in in the Library of Alexandria, uh, simply called him the titan. So, which uh, and what were the titans? The Titans were the giants, and so one of the gods, Helios, right, is one of the giants, which is from that Genesis text, and in Greek Greek mythology, um, these giants ruled the Golden Age, so there were giants that uh, you know that those texts from from Genesis say that uh, these were the days of the giants they were immortal giants they were the gods so the sun you know do we understand it as a, a human manipulating DNA you know do we do we think that that, that um, you know we're, we're gonna run away with another misunderstanding of it so now what we have is the the sons of God and one of those gods is Helios the sun itself so I will give you a a possible explanation of it uh, solar minimums and suns cause fertility and, and various other problems and I've just put a little video up of, you know uh, about the the effects of radiation on us and on our DNA and and um, that's known you know we can get cancer we can get sunburn so the the Helios which is a god um, so what the, does that god produce well it produces photons you know so the sons or offspring of the the and I'm trying to trying to of Helios the sun god could actually just enter the daughters of men. So what we have is neutrinos or solar particles, uh, radiation coming into the daughters of men. It's a scientific observation and we do not understand the word God. Um, it's been and so um, what I've done is radiation and pregnancy 
just as a, you know, as a, a concept that the sons of God enter into the daughters of Eve will give you an idea of the possibility of how we totally misunderstand what has been written in the Bible. Uh, thank you very much everyone for listening.